symbols, books, networks. From cuneiform script to binary code, writing is the real beginning of existence. Heraclitus. People often pass on information through spoken words and gestures. Before writing developed, signs, images and symbols helped to store knowledge and stories. Using memory aids such as tallies and counting strings, people remembered the messages they had to convey. 5,000 years ago, cuneiform script developed in Mesopotamia and was humanity's first writing system. 3,000 years ago, the Chinese script developed. One character for each syllable. And in the Eastern Mediterranean, the Phoenicians created the first alphabet. Scrolls, palm leaf books, fanfold and holy texts were all valuable treasures for an elite group of people. Of all the worlds mankind has created, the world of books is the greatest, Heinrich Heine. The invention of the letterpress, a milestone. Information could now be reproduced at will and circulated. The book became a commodity. Various professions wanted to earn money from this, such as bookbinders. I bind all kinds of books, spiritual and worldly, large and small, in parchment or just boards, and add fittings with good paper and clasps and I stamp them for decoration and level them out. I gold plate the pattern. I can make a lot of money from that. The reformers used the new opportunity to produce large circulations. They distributed flyers to publicize their ideas. But the Catholic Church, who had imparted knowledge to that point, wanted to be able to choose what people were allowed to read. They published the list of prohibited books from 1559 onwards. These books were not permitted to be printed or distributed. Only in 1948 did the list of prohibited books cease to be published. But writers and journalists continue to be in danger around the world to this day. The group Writers in Prison notes, In 2011, 43 writers or journalists were killed around the world. 16 disappeared and 277 were arrested. 170 had to appear in court. 162 received death threats or other threats or were harassed. 132 were attacked or injured. Prohibited books have always been read and distributed. In the 18th century, reading experienced a completely new popularity. There was talk of reading mania and heavy reading. He who does not read doesn't know the world. Let's say you read an average of one new book every five days. This leads us to the frightening conclusion that you would only read 3,000 books in the course of your life. You simply have no time to read in a kitsch or merely average way. Arno Schmidt Schools developed, and non-academics got access to education. Serial novels and magazine novels fulfilled the desire for entertainment. <laughs> Literature, the demand for higher reading. But who is to be the master? The author? Or the reader? Denis Diderot. Industrialization and the widespread use of electricity interlinked and accelerated life. Machines took on ever more work, even in book publishing and in trade. The printed word came to define public life. It became the first mass media. Against the trend for mass production, printers and artists attempted to create particularly beautiful books. They wanted to show that the design could bring out the character of the book.
The book as a beautiful object is a resistance against the throwaway society. Fritz Barkowski Electromagnetic waves enable the invention of radio and television. They become the main media of the 20th century. In 1932, Berthold Brecht was already complaining. Radio would be conceivably the greatest communication device of public life if it would learn not just to transmit, but also to receive. So it didn't just make the listener listen, but also speak. Didn't isolate him, but interacted with him. This was achieved two generations later with the computer. Initially, it was seen as a tool, as an extended arm of humanity. Computers now connect people via the internet and giant networks are created. People and media are merging together to an increasing extent. Cyberspace is becoming reality. The ocean of data can only be held back with filters and search engines. There is not just an ever-increasing amount of digital information, but the vast floods of data also disappear quickly. This makes space for new data and doesn't clog up the machine memory. But in this way, the information society is paradoxically losing its digital history. Florian Rotzer. This is why libraries continue to be so important. They are transforming into a virtual archive which makes all media accessible. Libraries, museums and archives are becoming a networked media and knowledge universe. A digital, cultural memory for mankind. Reality and virtuality are interlinked and overlapping. <laughs>